Howdy folks. My last video got a lot more attention than I was anticipating, and I have a couple of non-Magic the Gathering videos that I'm currently doing research for, so I figured I may as well put out a short little video with a few more thoughts on the EDH format. Today I'm going to be talking about a couple different ways of orienting a deck in relation to its commander, and one in particular that I find to be underrated. To start with, let's talk about a pretty conventional way of constructing a commander deck. You find a commander that looks cool, you find cards that synergize well with said commander, and then you fill in the gaps with other things the deck needs to succeed. This is a simple and malleable format, but there are other options out there. To talk about those, a useful exercise is to think about the rules of the commander format as if you've never seen them before. You're building a 99 card singleton deck, something with a naturally high degree of variability. But you have an ace up your sleeve, a card that you will always have, every single game. You could make that card Cranko Mob Boss, and then play a Goblins deck. And that's a perfectly valid plan. But something you might notice about that plan is that the commander and the deck do basically the same thing play Goblins. A lot of strong decks will opt to have the commander do something tangential to the rest of the deck, tying in with some key cards, but broadly offering something different in nature than the rest of the deck. However, my favorite form of this relationship is where the commander does the exact opposite of the thing that the rest of the deck is trying to do. Basically, you pick out a commander, and then you build a mid-rangey deck with a glaring weakness solved by that commander. An example that comes to mind is a Glissa Sunslayer deck that I built several months back. The card is a fantastic creature for 3 mana, an absurdly effective blocker, a draw engine, and a source of endless sadness for decks running enchantments. The EDH rec page seems to consist mostly of decks trying to capitalize on Reuven counters from your cards, but I instead opted to build a hardcore battlecruiser deck. The commander's flexibility and daunting presence means that I can fully forget about early game creatures, and not worry as much about draw, instead jamming my deck to the brim with ramp, removal, and massive cards. I have a top-notch blocker that's also a draw engine, every single game, and that lets me use my deck slots to focus on being the greedy bitch that I truly want to be deep inside. Another example of this is a Liesa deck I built recently. When I first saw Liesa, I went, God, that card could absolutely beat the tar out of people. All I want in this world is to mercilessly beat my opponents with that angel. So great, my commander is selected. How to build a deck around it? Well, judging by the EDA trek page, most people's answer to that question is to put it in a life gain deck. Now, I don't hate this approach, you know. Run a bunch of cards that gain life, and some life gain synergy, and a commander that will sap life out of both you and your opponents. It makes sense, and you could even argue that it sort of fits my template here. But that's not the direction I went in. Instead, I decided to build a deck that's just dying, craving for a beater to cut through a stale board state. I built a Hate Bears deck. I crammed as many hay pairs as I possibly could into the deck. Just truly an upsetting wall of little asshole guys trying to ruin the day of my poor opponents. And the deck has ended up working exactly as intended in a good portion of the games. The cards in the deck chip in damage, prevent damage coming at me, and generally hinder my opponents in all sorts of ways. And then Liesa cuts through the resulting board quagmire to reduce my opponents to a paste-like homogenate. By design, it's a deck with roughly a Liesa-shaped hole, and I'm able to play Liesa for 5 mana anytime I want, in any game I want. There's a lot of room for variation here, but this gives a decent idea of the basic formula. Running a commander that covers a particular element of the deck allows a player to build a deck that puts that element on the back burner instead focusing all its effort on the things it knows it can succeed at. This way, you can effectively just solve the problem that you know your deck will have ahead of time, instead of agonizing over how many deck slots to devote to it. 
I certainly don't like the prospect of figuring out how to kill my opponents consistently with a low to mid budget hate bears deck, so I just avoided that question. Mid range is often something that people look down on for being boring or bland, but with some creative usage of the rules of the format, you can build a really fun deck that exists within the mid range realm, and I think more people should give that a try. <laughs>